Hey, Vinay here, and in this video, I want to show you how we actually made the zaps um, and break down and show you kind of an example of how you can make them yourself in the previous example video where we showed an integration between uh, CRM process treat and our contract signing tool, HelloSign. Um, in that example, if you want to see that example or if you want to see the actual process and uh, integration happening and you want to see how it works, then go and check out that video first. Um, or if you just want to see how I actually built this app in that video and you've already watched it, then uh, feel free to keep watching this one. So the first step is going to be to actually build your process. So what you want to make sure of is that you have completely built your process, all the form fields are in there, everything's named correctly, and, and largely you don't want to make too many updates to this process after you've built your zap, because if you do things like delete fields or change tasks around, um, it can potentially break your zap. So ideally you want to get it done completely um, ready. You know, you can change things like content or a few things like that, but if you do make large changes to your template, adding or removing different form fields or changing a lot of the form fields, then you're going to want to retest and make sure everything is still working. So you can either start from a blank template and build them out, or you can use some of our pre-mades. We have a lot of them in there that already have form fields that you can kind of use. But either way, the first step is to get your process completely built and, and ready. And if you want to see more about building processes or how they work, you can see the user guide uh, by up here and go into user guide. So once you've built your process, it's time to configure your zaps. In this example, I have two different zaps that I built. The first zap actually triggers the checklist in process treat based on an activity enclosed. So as you saw from the previous video, the checklist is triggered when I change the opportunity status in close from anything to customer converted. That is that first zap here. The second zap um, is a multi-step zap that both sends activity of tasks checked back to close and also when a specific task is checked triggers a contract in HelloSign. So let's jump into the first one. You can see this app comprises of three steps. The trigger, which is new opportunity status changed, a filter, and the create checklist action in Process Street. First, you're gonna to wanna to select your CRM. In this, in this case, I chose close IO. You're gonna to wanna to connect it, etc. cetera. Um, you're gonna choose, or what I chose is new opportunity status change. So triggers when a new opportunity status change is created. You can trigger checklists, for example, with the close IO integration, often you lead a new task and new opportunity, and you note if you could create a new note with a specific word in it, that could trigger the checklist. Um, status changes, so if you change them from a uh, lead to a customer, really anything. Um, but in this case, I chose the opportunity status. Connect your close IO account, and then test the connection. Um, once that's done, we're going to want to add a filter. Um, the reason we're adding a filter is because we don't want it to trigger a checklist when any opportunity status is changed from anything to anything. We specifically only want to change it when the new status label, so not the original status, but the, the, the status label that it was converted to, and I can choose all the different choices here, any of the fields to filter by, uh, contains customer converted, and that's the opportunity that that we've set up in our system that signals that the, you know, the customer is converted. And so this will now only create a checklist when the opportunity status is changed to the new opportunity status is customer converted. Next, we set up our action. Here we pick process street as the app we want to create an action in. The action is create checklist. We pick the organization we want, and then we go on to creating the template. To configure the template, First, you want to pick the process street template that you're going to be running the checklist against. So in this example, I've chosen client onboarding as our template here is client onboarding. Then it's going to ask you for some fields. You want to name the checklist. What's the checklist name going to be? In this case, I chose the lead display name, which is Tesla. You can configure a due date. I didn't configure one for this. You can define who is assigned to the checklist and you can pre pick people, or you could enter in a value that's passed from the CRM. So I could pick a custom value. And for example, if I wanted to assign this checklist uh, also to the customer, in this case, Elon Musk, then I could do that. I've also passed in some comments. So that was how I created the LinkedIn uh, link and the CRM link in the comments. 
Um, I did that by selecting which comment I wanted to um, add the attachments to uh, and the comments to and then uh, inserted them that way. So this is using markup here to generate links and that's how I got them to be clickable links. I also um, added in a field with the URL for the image to pass the uh, the image attachment. The these fields are all the, the meta fields of the checklist. They're available in every checklist, regardless of if you add forms or not. Things like the template name, the checklist name, the due date, etc. After I've done those, I then come to the form fields in my checklist. And here I've configured some of the different form fields to pass through the data. For example, the company name, I've pushed through the lead display name, that's a form field. Um, that's a form field that you can see inside the checklist here. So for example, company name, Tesla, contact email. So here I'm configuring the different form fields to pass the data to them. So company name is the delete display name and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna find the different form fields. I can update or insert data into any of the form fields in the entire checklist. So I could, pr I could have them check off different of these items if I wanted, um, I could uh, attach or push in documents into the file widgets or set the date of the new client um, questionnaire or fill out any of the other form fields that exist throughout the template when I'm launching this. So you're going to see all the form fields that, ex that you've created in your template here. Um, they're organized by the date that you created them. So if you if you created the, the, the form fields in the bottom uh, task first and then created the ones in the top later, unfortunately they're going to be organized that way. That's why they're a bit conf uh, confusing here. But all the form fields are going to be here if it's depending on the form field type, you'll have the correct options. So for contact email, I'm going to pass through the contact email. For lead, lead status, I'm going to pass through the lead status. For the CRM URL, I'm going to pass through the CRM URL. And if you do have, for example, drop down options, well, these are the sub checklists. So here I can pass through if I want them checked or not. And then also, if we do, if we have drop down options, for example, project status, here I can actually predefine a drop down value to be selected in the drop-down fields. And that's it. That's the configuration of the run. I'm just passing, I'm, I'm creating a checklist and I'm passing through the data into the form fields. Back here, and we're gonna look at the second zap now. So that's the zap that actually runs the checklist, right? And pushes the data through. There's also another integration, as you saw in the original video, that when I check off items in the process, it sends those back as notes to the CRM and when I specifically check off the send contract for signing to HelloSign, it actually generates a contract and sends it to my client. And both of those are configured in the next multi-steps app, which you can see here. So let's work through this one. First, I'm gonna set up my trigger in Process Street. So this is like what happens in Process Street that causes an activity to happen in another system. And in this case, I have new task checked. So basically every time somebody completes one of the steps in one of the checklists under the client onboarding template, it's triggering this other series of events in Zapier. So first select process street as your app for the trigger and then select new task checked. You can also set triggers on new comments, new checklist, new attachments, and we'll be adding more of these soon. Then you wanna edit the options. Here I'm going to select client onboarding as my template because that's the template because that's the template here client onboarding that I want to be tracking these zaps against. I'm going to leave the task blank, but if you only wanted it to trigger off a specific task, you could do that. You can also use the filter to do that as well, but this is just a shortcut. Next, I want every time that I update this task, a task in process street, I want it to add a note in close. Um, but to do that, we have to do a couple of different things. Um, and that is, first we have to figure out which contact in close or which lead in close we want to actually add the note against because it has to be specifically for Tesla in this case because we don't want us sending a note that we completed a task for Uber when we're actually working on Tesla. So the first thing that I have to do is I actually have to run a search zap to find the lead that I want to add the note to. So first I'm going to add the, the action, which is going to be find lead. I'm going to pick close and then I'm going to choose find lead for the action under the search options in close. I'm going to select the close account and then 
I'm gonna it's gonna give me basically an option to what is the search query that you want to that you want to look for and here it has an option for a custom search query um, I could also use the email field that would probably work too but here I've just put the checklist form fields contact email so that's gonna be the contact email and we'll show you the example there but the contact email for the particular for the client that's that we've inserted into the form field here so what this app is gonna do is this is basically gonna do a search in my CRM for the contact that has this email address and it's gonna pull me back the details of that lead. Then I'm gonna create a second action in the CRM that's gonna be add a new note or new note. So there I'm gonna go through the same process. I'm gonna select my CRM. I'm going to pick new note as the action instead of find lead. Um, also to add new actions, you just hit these plus buttons here. I'm gonna pick my close account and then I'm gonna configure the template. So here I'm adding in a note. So it's gonna, it's first it's asking me which lead do you wanna add a note to? And it's telling me that I need the lead ID. So what I'm actually doing is I'm pushing through the lead ID uh, that I found in this search when I search for the email address. Another thing that you could do instead of having to pass the email address and doing a find lead option step, um, or for example, if your CRM or tool that you're using does not have this find option in Zapier, is when you're triggering the process, you can actually send the ID as a form field. Um, and actually, I have that here, I have the URL, but I can also send, um, and I actually do have a hidden field that sends just the lead ID. So I could actually, instead of doing this lookup step, I could just send it with the lead ID that I put into the form field. But I chose to do this search step just so people can see how it works with the email as well. Once you have the ID, whether you pulled that from your forms or from a search step using the email address, those are generally the two most common ways you're gonna do it, you can then go and construct your note. So in this case, I said that uh, the username who updated the step, so it'd be Vinay, just completed the name of the step on Process Street, and here's the link. So you can construct or build out that message in any way that you want. Those are the fields that I've added, but you could add more information like the field name, uh, any of the form fields, or any other information from the process that you may want to send back to the CRM. That is going to be the complete step for sending the data back to the CRM. So when a new task is checked, to be able to send it back to the CRM by searching for the lead and then adding the note. And that's the total amount that we do for that. But we can continue on with this same zap because we also want to trigger one of the items, one of the tasks to send a contract when we, when we complete this, this specific task, send the contract to HelloSign. And in that case, we say we want another action to happen, but we only want it to happen when that task is completed not when any of the tasks in the process is completed. And so we create a filter here. Um, this filter is configured to basically say, when the name of the task exactly matches send contract for signing via hello sign, only then go on and do this specific action. And in this case, the action is send a template for signing with hello sign. So to create this action, we pick hello sign as our app. We pick the um, send template for signature action, choose the account, and then we configure our contract for signing. So there's a lot of data in here, but you're kind of following the same process. First, pick which particular contract you want signing. In this case, I've picked our consulting agreement. You can create a subject and a message that gets sent with the email when the contract goes out. So you can customize the message that goes out. You could insert the client's name, you can insert the person who sent its name, the username who's, uh, of, the, of the person who checked off the item, for example, or any other combination of that, of that message. Um, you can add in other things, and these, these may be or may not be specific for HelloSign, um, but the title and uh, the employer's name. This is the one that you're gonna always need is gonna be the employee's email address. And um, actually, I have that configured as just for a test one, but from here, and you can see it's actually pulling, pulling up information now, I can insert any data from any of these fields. So I could insert the email address from new task checked, which um, has Elon's email here. So I could insert that. I could also insert the information from the, the search that we did in the CRM if I wanted to. Um, but so in this case, I would put in your checklist forms field contact email. From there, 
I'm going to look at the CEO's name. Um, I can type that in manually or I can pass it through. Also, the CEO's email address, I can, same thing. I could pass through, say, the user's email from Process Street or I could just put in a permanent one if you always need the CEO or whoever to sign the other side of the contract. Job title, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a few more fields here, the checklist form fields, contact name and the checklist name I can push through as the different fields. And all these fields get mapped in automatically into the contract. So we would say, you know, this contract is for Elon Musk to sign from Tesla and this is the date and it's being signed by Vinay and it's for this project, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so any, any, of the, any of the data that I wanted to pass through from the form on my process street account or from the contact record in the CRM, I can knit them all together and I can pass that into the contract for signing. And that is how I configured the zaps for the above videos. Thanks for watching.